Hey, Hammy here, back with part five of our cell communication chapter. Uh, in this chapter, in this section, we are going to look at the response to cell signals. So remember, we have signal reception, signal transduction, and then, act then the third step is how does that cell respond to receiving a cell signal? And that's what we want to look at today. A response is a cell signaling that leads through that transduction pathway. Uh, most of the times, uh, this extracellular, so outside the cell signal that's hitting a receptor in the cell membrane, uh, is going to either regulate transcription or it's going to change something that is happening in the cytoplasm. Okay, and so we call this response the output response. So you get an input, you get an input of a signal, and then you get an output response. Again, ultimately a single transduction pathway leads to one or more cellular activities. Uh, this may happen out in the cytoplasm or it may travel into the nucleus. Okay, if it's out in the cytoplasm, Okay, this would uh, usually either turn on or turn off or activate enzymes or other proteins. Uh, if it's going into the nucleus, uh, this would oftentimes be a, a transcription factor, uh, which we'll talk about in future chapters that will go into the DNA and bend and expose certain genes uh, to make some kind of product. So they're going to turn genes on or off in the nucleus uh, to make some kind of new product that will cause something different to happen in the cell. Okay, this diagram is just an overview of something that would be turning on a gene. So here comes, up here comes our ligand. Uh, it's going to hit our receptor, uh, which is going to cause our transduction pathway, our phosphorylation cascade, uh, which will lead to an activated transcription factor, right? Here's our transcription factor. Okay, which might be phosphorylated. Okay, it's a little phosphate group, which might phosphor, phosphorylate it, which is going to turn it on, which is going to come in here to the DNA. And this section of DNA right here is, is coding for uh, some kind of mRNA that's going to make some kind of protein. Hey, can you let me in? Okay, this is just another diagram that's showing it not going into the nucleus. Uh, but regulating an enzyme. So uh, one that this chapter has talked a lot about is epinephrine uh, and that response in the liver. So epinephrine binding to a GPCR on the membrane. Uh, here's the phosphorylation cascade okay, through the cytoplasm, and it's not going to make a new protein. Okay, This glycogen phosphorylase down here, remember, is going to turn glycogen into glucose one phosphate, okay, which can be turned into glucose in the blood and is going to up the blood sugar levels for some kind of response, fight or flight response. Okay, so we're not making something new. It's just activating an enzyme for that response in the body. Uh, signaling pathways can also affect the overall behavior of a cell. Uh, for example, sometimes it's not making a new protein. It's not causing DNA to be read. It's not activating an enzyme. Sometimes it will just trigger cell shape changes. On this slide here, uh, we're looking at yeast. When the two wild types will meet and they receive uh, that mating signal, okay, which is out here, this mating factor. Okay, here's our GPCR, okay, which is going to activate the G protein right here, which is going to go through a phosphorylation cascade. Uh, it's going to activate Fuse 3. Okay, when Fuse 3 is activated, it phosphorylates formin. Okay, formin is then going to initiate the growth of microtubules okay, and microfilaments. Sorry, microfilaments. Remember, microtubules and microfilaments are what make that cytoskeleton. And it's when these microfilaments grow, when they start act, adding actin subunits to it and they start to grow, it's going to push out on the cell membrane. And these pushing outs are called schmooze. Okay, so when you have two, um, you know, two fungi that are send out mating factors and it's a hit, okay, they will form these schmooze. So they'll start kind of schmooing towards each other. And when they hit, okay, that's what can cause sort of, you know, it can cause them to kind of fuse together. 
and cause that mating to happen. So there's no gene product made. There's no enzyme sort of activated. Uh, it's just getting this growth of actin filaments or this building of actin and causing a cell shape change. The response in a cell can be fine-tuned. There's four aspects that we want to look at. Number one, how is the signal amplified? Uh, number two, what about the specificity? How specific is the response? Uh, we want to look at scaffolding proteins and what do they do? And finally, when does the signal end? How do we terminate the signal or the response? First step, signal amplification. It's important understand enzyme cascades. Uh, so when you get the signal to like a GPCR right here, and then it causes a phosphorylation cascade, okay, it might, it's important to understand that each step, it, it is amplified. The number of products might be tenfold or 20-fold than the previous step. Okay, so, you know, when you get the amplification, you're going to get a bunch of G proteins. A bunch of G proteins will, you know, uh, it, you know, will activate a bunch of adenyl cyclases, uh, which is going to make a bunch of cyclic amps, which is going to make a bunch of protein kinases. So look, if each one amplifies 10, and then each of those amplify 10, from one ligand, one signal up here, you're going to have a massive response, okay? Amplification, making bigger, amplify. Okay, if I strum my electric guitar and you're, it's really quiet, you might be able to hear it. I plug it into an amplifier, it takes that signal through a speaker and makes it much louder. So kind of think of it that way. It's going to make the signal louder, more pronounced, bigger. Two, the specificity. Okay, how specific uh, is that cell signal? Different kinds of health cells have different collections of proteins. Those different proteins allow cells to detect and respond to different signals. Even the same signal can have different effects and different pathways. Uh, when we look at epinephrine, uh, that's the one uh, your chapter has been focusing on. And when it hits the liver, okay, it's going to cause this response of glucose formation in the blood, blood sugar. Okay, That same signal of epinephrine when it hits the heart is not going to cause glucose to release, uh, but is going to increase the heart rate. It's going to cause it, cause it to beat faster. So same signal, but different specific uh, signals, signaling receptors in different cells, different tissues in the bodies, okay, might cause a different response. Okay? And sometimes the pathways branch and crosstalk, that helps better coordinate that cell signal. This slide is just illustrating different types of spe specificity. Uh, in cell A, this is just that single response pathway, which we've kind of been looking at. Uh, cell B, okay, when that ligand comes into a receptor here, okay, receptor, uh, you'll notice that that G protein might actually, you know, trigger two different response pathways. Uh, there might be crosstalk. If you get two separate ligands, Okay, it might coordinate some type of special response. You might have to get two separate signals in order to get response for. Not just this one, but you also need this signal as well for that response to happen. And response five, different receptor. This is like where we talked about, okay, this might be the liver over here, whereas the heart over here might have a receptor for for that same ligand, but it would cause a different response in the heart, like an increased heart rate versus in your liver, which is more glucose released into the blood. Uh, number three uh, is the scaffolding proteins. They are large relay proteins uh, to which other relay proteins are attached. Scaffolding proteins can increase the signal transduction efficiency by grouping together. Okay, in different proteins within the same pathway. So you scaffold, you kind of get them clumped together. Uh, they also help activate some of the relay proteins. Uh, they also help tie some of the signals together. Uh, this slide is just showing us a simple scaffolding where your three different protein kinases okay, are connected by a scaffolding protein. Okay, and that's going to collect that response uh, in that cell. 
uh, your chapter talks about how this happens in our brain, uh, where it can take different uh, synapses and sort of bundle them together, different responses, and help bundle them together and help coordinate them and make them easier to get to. And finally, number four, okay, when a cell has a response, it doesn't want to keep doing that forever. Okay, there has to be a termination. There are inactivation mechanisms that are essential because you don't want this to keep going and going and going. For example, if the ligand concentration falls, okay, you don't have the signal there anymore, fuel receptors will be bound, and then unbound receptors revert back to an inactive state. Okay, so we have to be able to turn these cell signals on and off again. Okay, when they are no longer, you don't want epinephrine uh, surging through your veins your whole life. You're going to live in this like excited, sort of awakened state, uh, which would be hard on your heart and muscles and brain and other parts of your body. It's just during emergencies. So signals, that response has to eventually be turned off. Okay, that's it for part five. Uh, we have one more a uh, part that we'll look at cell communication and that is cell apoptosis or programmed cell death. Gammy, out.